Hello and welcome to Ageless Rock, a channel where megalithic sites can be seen from another perspective. This video is a continuation from part 1 of Ratu Boko Palace. We are going to explore a few more structures that make no sense. Java Island is extremely rich in megalithic sites, but it is extremely underpromoted. It is a tourist destination where you can spend one month vacation and still not get enough of it. Let's continue from the previous presentation with the next mysterious structure called Paseban. It is a Javanese word for Balai di Raja in Malay, which simply means it is a royal hall where the king can meet the audience. These stones came in different sizes and were stacked into a structure that looks like a platform. For now, it is called a foundation for meeting. What was supposed to be on top has yet to be discovered. These two royal halls are pretty much identical. I am pretty sure this is not a place constructed specifically for locals to meet the king. One paseban is already too big. Two means carving bedrock with ancient chisel is too easy and Javanese had nothing better to do. The next unknown structure is called Pendopo. In Java, it is called Pendapa. Pendapa is from the word Mandapa, which is a Sanskrit word. Mandapa simply means a hall. In plain simple comparison of today, it is a pavilion. Pendapa in Java is a common structure where a raised platform with a roof is used for gathering. You can tell from the old photos, these are all made of wood, even for the royal families. An oversized pendopo made of polygonal stones 1,000 years earlier is such an anomaly, you have to rethink about human regression. There is a Sanskrit-based inscription found at Ratuboko. It is called Abayagiri inscription. Based on this inscription, this pendopo is dated at 792 AD. It mentioned King Dharmo Tunga Dewa built a monastery. Abayagiri is just to name after the famous Abayagiri Monastery in Sri Lanka. But this inscription has nothing to do with the real Abayagiri Monastery in Sri Lanka. To avoid confusion, I would rather call this stone tablet Dharmo Tunga Dewa inscription just to be more specific and to avoid confusion. There isn't much you can find on the measurements of this structure, so I use Google Map to get a sense of scale of this project. On the rectangular platform, there is a square platform measuring 20 meters on all sides and a rectangular platform measuring 20 meters by 6 meters. It is a platform on a platform. But for those who see the Gopura entrances as a portal, this platform is most likely not a vihara. The center of the entire structure is on the square platform. We will never know why because we only see ancient sites as tombs, temples and palaces. There is not a shred of evidence that there was even one wooden pillar or a leaf of a thatched roof. Megalithic builders can build pillars and roofs with stone if they wanted to. This is an open space since the beginning. It can get pretty hot on a dry season on a sunny day. It can get pretty wet on a wet season on a rainy day. This is not a place for meditation. These protrusions are pretty much the reason why mainstream believes it is a vihara. It is believed that the protrusions were once a stone base for wooden pillars and therefore there was once a roof and therefore, it was once a vihara for meditation. These protrusions are around the platform. Officially, we have no idea what it is for. It looks like stone base and became a topic for discussion for the highly advanced Western academia. These tiny protrusions as stone bases for wooden pillars are actually laughable assumptions because all you need is stacking stones vertically instead of horizontally. If there is a wooden roof or a stone roof, the center will have pillars to support all the weight. There will be umpa stones in the center. 
if you still want to argue it is a platform for the vihara then what is this platform doing outside on the east side of the wall it is about 36 meters long and 6 meters wide even more mysterious is that there is a deep dark out structure since no one knows anything these two structures are not named at the end of the day, I agree with mainstream that we still do not know what is this 3 meter tall wall and platform structure inside is for. Let's move on to the south of Pendopo where there is another platform. To the east end of the platform, there are three small structures that look like temples. There are three small statues of Durga, Ganesha and Agassya found nearby. These three structures were found on the east of Pendopo and was brought here because archaeologists believe they belong here. The three statues are believed to be ones inside these temples. This is actually the only platform with structures that makes the entire 16 hectare site looks like a temple. Does that even make sense? Although mainstream calls these three as temples, I think it is more complicated than that as it has four drains that seems to allow water to flow into the square hole. Without the three structures, it would have been another crematorium. Anyway, no one is talking about this structure. Assuming the three temples are not supposed to be here, then this structure is just another platform with four platforms. One of the platforms has a square hole in the middle then it would actually look like the crematorium as mentioned in part 1. Speaking about unknown platform, there is a very big platform measuring 34 meters by 17 meters. This structure is like two squares put together and split in the middle with lots of batu umpa. We are so clueless about this structure that it is not mentioned anywhere. This no-name structure is a rectangular single layer of stones which seems to be a foundation. I think the reason this has so many missing pieces is because it is easy to take whatever you like and use them for your house. Lootings and pillaging is a common thing in recent past history. This structure is even in front of a signage, but the signage gave direction to Pendopo and Kaputren. It's like telling visitors to keep going, there is nothing to see here. But when I zoom in to see the Umpa stones, I found something interesting. Look at the bedrock. Someone did something to the bedrock. Can you see the diagonal cut? There is something unusual. I think it is one of those diagonal cuts you can find in my video on mysterious striations. It is one of those cuts that looks like someone sliced it out like butter. There are many ruins scattered around this site waiting for interpretation. Excavation is far from over and is still an ongoing activity. There are a lot of scattered stones collected to the site waiting for someone who knows what to do with them. There is quite a bit to cover for this site and will end here for now. Hope to see you in part 3 for more unknown structures that make no sense. That's all for now and have a nice day. Sekian, terima kasih.